Hello, everyone, and good evening. My name is Alia, and I would like to welcome you to Light Bearer Missions Community Empowerment Hour. The purpose of the Community Empowerment Hour is to make a difference in the community by providing training and information that'll meet the needs of community members and their families. We believe that these seminars will make a difference in your lives. If you would like to stay up to date with all of the upcoming program topics and the scheduled dates, please take a moment to put your email in the chat box. This evening, Sister Terry will be hosting a cooking demonstration. So in a little bit, I will be playing a video in which Sister Terry is preparing a healthy, more nutritious version of the shepherd's pie. Fair warning, I will be stopping the video along the way to chat with Sister Terry and ask a few questions. If you guys have any questions while watching the video or while we're speaking, feel free to put your questions in the chat box or wait until after the presentation is over because there will be a question and answer um, session at the end of the cooking demonstration. But before we begin chatting with Miss Terry tonight, uh, let's open with a quick word of prayer. Lord, thank you for bringing us together this evening. Please be with the presenter today and let her message resonate in the hearts of the viewers. Please be with us as we depart. In Jesus' name, amen. So Sister Terry, today you're gonna to be sharing a cooking demonstration. And before we begin, can you tell us what plant-based cooking is, how and why you transitioned to a plant-based diet? Well, um, by definition, a plant-based um, or plant-based cooking is, is creative cooking using only plants that would be like vegetables or plant-based products. And a place plant-based diet provides all the nutrients that are required for healthy eating. And, and positive growth without the use of animal products. I decided to transition to a plant-based diet because for my personal health and for my dietary needs, it was the one diet that was most supportive. So um, that's why I became a vegan. Okay, thank you. And so just to be clear, the dish that you're preparing in this video is vegan. It's 100% plant-based, correct? That is correct. There are no can animal you, products at all. Can you tell us what about the dish that you're gonna be um, cooking in this demonstration? Yes, uh, shepherd's pie is a, um, a dish that is originated in Ireland in the late 1700s. It was it provided a vehicle by which the shepherds' families could um, utilize leftovers from their Sunday uh, evening um, roast dinner, and it generally contained either ground beef or chopped lamb, layered with vegetables and a layer, a top layer of smashed potatoes. Uh, it was convenient because it could be transported as the shepherds went off to work in the, into the fields in the evening. And it can be enjoyed uh, in cool as well as hot. Um, and, it's like most comfort foods, it's not a very healthy food when it's prepared traditionally, which is why I wanted to do a vegan version of it that was much more healthier, hit all the same culinary notes as the traditional uh, pie, but had a whole lot less calories and fat. Yes, so we're gonna be looking at uh, a home comfort healthy food this evening. Exactly. <laughs> it's hard to say because that's not very, it's almost an oxymoron. When you think of comfort foods, they're not usually very healthy. They're right. comfort foods because they're they're yummy on our tummies, but ooh, a minute on, what's the saying? A minute on the lips, forever on the hips. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm going to start sharing my screen. And in this video, you're just going to get right into sharing the ingredients and how to prepare the shepherd's pie. Okay. okay. So here I'm just demonstrating the ingredients that are going into the, um, the, the pie and to your immediate left, 
just in front of where I'm standing is the plate with different spices. On that plate, you can't see, but we have garlic powder, onion powder, uh, turmeric, some curry powder, some smoked paprika, some red pepper flake. Um, and I mm -hmm. usually try to put a little thyme, uh, but I didn't have any fresh thyme and I like fresh thyme, so. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and play the video. Go ahead. Here we have some um, minced white button mushrooms. These are minced portobello mushrooms. This is tomato paste. We have our TVP, some minced, finely minced onions, finely minced garlic, and red bell pepper. Then we are also gonna be using some uh, commercial meat uh, that you have seen. Uh, and this, the best thing about this recipe is you can use some or all of these ingredients uh, or get creative and make your own. We're gonna get started. I'm gonna get our pan up to heat. And we're gonna start with just one tablespoon and that's all we're gonna add is one tablespoon of oil. I, um, depending on how hot I'm cooking, today I'm using olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. You don't need to use that. You can use whichever oil you have available to you. Um, obviously you wanna use as healthier um, alternatives as you can. So we are using the extra virgin olive oil because we're not gonna have a lot of high heat. And as you know, um, heat will denaturize our protein. So I have my oven already preheated to 400, which is where we're gonna bake it on. And we're gonna start by sauteing our onions, mushrooms, and garlic. So once the, the, um, the onions turn translucent or start to turn translucent, we then add in our mushrooms. And the last thing we add will be the garlic because we don't want our garlic to burn. And once garlic burns, it becomes very bitter. It is not a pleasant thing to eat when it's burnt. So we, we want to slow cook it. Only takes a few minutes. Everything. The other good thing about this is once you have fixed this dish, you can pop it in the fridge and you it makes quite a bit, as you'll see. And you can eat on it for a whole week very easily by popping it out and um, tossing it into the um, to the microwave to enjoy. So at this point now, the onions are started to release their juices and we're gonna go ahead and start adding in our mushrooms. I have about two cups of mushrooms. I probably won't use uh, both cups. Although um, the mushrooms add great um, minerals. Also, they add great flavor. When you, they're a great substitute for meat uh, they have a nice meatiness to them, which is very, um, very inviting for people like my son who are big meat and potato uh, men. I also like to add some dried mushroom powder. This I created myself simply by using different um, mushrooms. I go to uh, some of the more specialty markets, international markets. I get the dried mushrooms, whether it's shiitake or chanterelle or whatever is available. And I used uh, my specialized um, coffee grinder. I have one I purchased just for grinding my herbs, spices and things, and, and I grind my mushrooms. So now I'm gonna add our, these are chopped red bell peppers. Now, I like to keep on hand the um, scotch bonnet peppers because if, if you know me, I love spice. So, um, And if you want it to be, and you are so inclined to add a little red bell pepper, go for it. I mean, uh, scotch bonnet or a little heat, go ahead. Speaking of heat, we're gonna add our garlic. Garlic brings heat. And it just brings so much flavor. I cannot imagine cooking without garlic or onions. So as you can see, it's coming together very nicely. Looks very moist, which is what we want. At this point, now that we've got our aromatics in, I like to add, generally at this point, I like to add in our spices. And the reason for that is because the spice flavor, it kicks up when it's heated up. So we have here, we have some, um, this is turmeric. This would be smoked paprika. This is garlic. This is onion powder, red bell pepper flakes, not red bell pepper, red chili flakes, 
Um, this is some Jamaican curry. And as you can see that little bit there, that's some pink Himalayan salt. Once you add all these spices in, you will not need the salt. It will be very little salt is needed. And that's about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. The other spices are all, with the exception of the uh, turmeric and the curry, are all one teaspoon. The turmeric and curry are half a teaspoon each. And I use them, I like to add turmeric as much as I can in, when I'm cooking because turmeric is a very, very helpful uh, spice. Um, and so when you can and you're able, add it in. It adds color and it brings a, a big nutritional bump. So if you're able to, so now that. So I'm just gonna pause right here. You mentioned that turmeric has some benefits. Can you explain some of the health benefits of turmeric and why you add that into um, your food? Sure, turmeric is like my hero of spices. It is one of the oldest and um, reputedly hardest working spices out there. It's been shown to help with the myriad of ailments. Uh, but for the benefit of time, I'm just gonna um, highlight a few. It is an anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, antioxidant. And these um, properties mean that it's helpful in things like cancer, arthritis, even Alzheimer's. And in addition, it is a, um, it's a skin brightener and an acne fighter. And a lot of people don't know that. And actually I, I use it myself. And if you're interested in a little recipe for a skin brightener um, and it's good for your skin, just um, later on, I'm gonna put my email address in there. You can email me and I'll send you a little recipe for a very good skin brightener as well as uh, conditioner. Oh, okay. So a lot of health benefits for turmeric. Definitely. Really interesting. Wonderful in the antioxidant um, properties of it because antioxidants actually remove free radicals in your body and free radicals it's cause so cancer. cancer. And exactly. then the, uh, anti-inflammatories is why it's helpful with arthritis. Mm -hmm. Also, it has been known to cross the blood brain barrier, which is why it's helpful with Alzheimer's. So oh. it's, it's really a phenomenal spice. Yeah. I'll definitely include that into a couple more of my dishes then <laughs> definitely <laughs> okay i'm gonna play this is getting nicely happy i'm gonna add just one spoonful of which is about a tablespoon of tomato paste to me, it seems like such a small amount but tomatoes um, not only bring vitamin c to the table um, but they also bring a very important macronutrient which is lutein and lutein is very good for your eyes so at this point we're going to start to add in our tvp now this is tvp which is an acronym for textured vegetable protein it's getting a little dry because the tvp can can you um explain really quickly to the viewers who don't know what tvp is and how you prepare it do you just pick it up at the store how do you go about that Yes, the those who are transitioning now are a very good uh, advantage because they're spoiled for choice. And TVP is one of those choices that is very economical, easy to find. It is a hydrated plant-based protein that is texturized to resemble and act as chicken or beef in recipes. And because it is uh, dehydrated, you have to hydrate it um, when you're using it, you can use um, any liquid to hydrate it, but I prefer to use vegetable stock. How much liquid you use or add to it makes a difference in the actual overall texture um, or tenderness of the uh, TVP. And it would depend on how much liquid is actually in the recipe that you're using it in to determine how much you would actually use to hydrate it. Oh, in this okay. application, I I use a ratio of three fourths cup of liquid to um, anywhere from a half cup to three fourths cup of liquid to one cup of TVP. I like to leave a little uh, bite to the TVP before adding it into the recipe. 
Okay, so TVP is basically a plant protein that kind of has the texture or resembles meat like foods and it gives foods more of a meatiness to it. Exactly. Oh, okay, that's definitely useful. Thanks for explaining that. And I should say it's it, it's um it's very good because about a cup, um, it is. I saw a note that someone say, "Is it tofu?" No, it's not tofu. Um, TVP is a vegetable protein. It it can come from different uh, plants, whereas tofu comes from soybean, and it's a right. different thing altogether. Okay, that's a good clarification. Yes. So the, what little bit of moisture is going in there, but at this point we're okay. So at some point we'll be adding back some gravy and you want your base, which is your base, to have a little bit of gravy. Once the meat has started to come together, we're gonna add what's in here is one teaspoon of what's called browning. This brownie is just nothing but an agent that helps to bring color to your food. And one tablespoon of vegetarian uh, teriyaki. Now, if you don't have teriyaki, you can always use um, some soy sauce. And I like to use some soy sauce. If you're in a house with men, I like to use the no soy soy sauce. Uh, because as you know, soy is not uh, male friendly. <laughs> so you don't want to give your men too much soy sauce because it increases the amount of estrogen and men don't want to have estrogen so i'm gonna okay i have to stop you right there um yeah. can you explain what you mean by that what are the health effects of soy sauce or soy in general well i i, I need to really and i'm appreciate you you stopping there because we really need to clarify that um there is a protein in so in um, soybeans that acts as like estrogen um in the body and there is um some discussion and controversy over whether or not um that that's going to have any effect on testosterone in men. And after uh, this video was done, I did a little more research and I found that it, it does not affect the testosterone um, uh, in men. And the benefits of soy far outweigh the issue, any problems because soy, like turmeric, is an, an old thing and it's been around for a long time and it has a myriad of health benefits most notably is the protein it brings one cup of soy will give you 20 grams of protein but you also get potassium magnesium uh, omega-3s iron uh, calcium in addition to that uh, in addition to all of that it's also an oxy um, antioxidant which you know as you mentioned earlier helps with free radicals. And that's very important when cancer seems to be just out of control. So if there are any men that are on a concerned about the effects of the uh, soy in their diet, they can consult with their physician and he their tests that they can do to, to determine if there's any problems. But there doesn't seem to be any um, problems that have been noted in the medical field uh, regarding um, the um, use of soy among among men, where I was mis misspoken was soy cannot be substituted for like uh, baby formula or breast milk. Um, and so that's a concern. And also one of the major concerns with soy is that you need to check it with your doctor because it can have some interaction with other with prescribed medications that might be adverse. So you'll want to um, divulge to your doctor if you're going on to a soy-based diet um, that information so that they can check any interactions the soy might have with any medications you might be on. Right. Interesting. So like most things, I assume consuming soy is something that you would have to do in moderation and also just keeping an eye out. That's for everything, no matter how good it is, 
too much of anything is a bad thing. This is why uh, moderation is called for across the board in all walks of life. Yeah. Thank you for explaining that. Right. Uh, it looks a little dry to me, so I'm going to add just a touch more of vegetable stock. And I'm going to grab my vegetables. This is coming together quite quickly because really once the base is done, um, the only other part, it's a layered pie, so it's the top layer and the only other layer would be potatoes. Now, traditionally, um, Scottish pie is made with uh, mashed potatoes. Um, and if you are diabetic, you know that you are always asked not to eat too much white stuff. White potatoes, white rice, uh, because it, it raises your blood sugar. Now, today I'm using russet potatoes, but, and we're not doing a, we're doing a mashed potato, but we're doing it in a healthier version of it where you can have your, your mash and eat it too. So what we're going to be doing and how the mashed potatoes will prepare is first you want to bake your potatoes, not boil them. Bake them in the skin. I'm going to add just a little more because it still looks too dry to me. So all together, we've probably used about a whole cup of the um, vegetable stock. You don't want to add any more oil because then that will throw, um, throw off our numbers. We want to have nice numbers. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat off because this is complete. Now, I'm going to probably let them hang out, and I should say for your vegetables, the vegetables I'm using are organic. Whenever possible, try to use fresh organic vegetables. If you can't find them, get, then get organic frozen. Organic is always best because they have less pesticides, and it's more close to the, uh, the, whole, the whole vegetable. So, at this point, I would be making my mashed potatoes, but... Because I was prepared for you to come to my kitchen, I went ahead and made the mashed potatoes last night. And they're already seasoned. It's just simple. Now we're ready to assemble our pie. So we, all we do at this point is put your base in to a pan. You don't need to prepare the pan in any way. You don't need to add any oil or anything because the juice that you have in the pot will keep your from sticking. So I'm going to level it out. And in traditional Scottish pie, you would um, then put on your mashed potato and then on top of the mashed potato, you would then sprinkle on some cheese. Well, we are doing a plant-based diet and you could add your vegan cheese. Personally, I, I think it's an unnecessary step because if you have properly seasoned and um, prepared your meat, it doesn't need any additional flavoring. And I should tell you that our mashed potatoes were flavored with garlic, and we instead of using cream, we used um, vegetable stock. Okay, just a really quick question as well. Um, so if someone would like to add vegan cheese, is there a specific type that you recommend? Or should we? Nowadays, everybody's full for choice because there's so many different varieties currently on the market. The one that I like and I've other uh, chefs and cooks I've, I have uh, spoken with that has the best melting point is the BioLife. Um, but I don't want to recommend one on the other. I say use what you like. If, if it's something you like, you're going to eat it and you're going to enjoy it. So even though I say I like BioLife, you may not like it. So choose, whichever is your favorite, use that. Because as I said in the video, if it's properly properly uh, seasoned, the cheese doesn't add a whole lot. It's just, and typically you sprinkle the cheese on the top of the pie. So it's not adding a whole lot. It's just a little color and a little, um, um, say, a la vie. So, <laughs> right. The, the best food that you can prepare is the food that you're willing to eat. So if you're not interested in cheese, just omit it and yes. complete the recipe as is. For something else. That's the way I always say. <laughs> exactly. 
and that keeps our potatoes nice and light and calories low. So as you can see, they're very easy to work with, very pliable. So we're gonna spoon our potatoes over. And you don't have to smooth them out. Uh, in fact, traditionally, they like to keep the peaks and valleys um, of the mashed potatoes, but you wanna try to make an even layer. You don't wanna have all your potatoes on one side. And it looks pretty when it comes out and you have the peaks and valleys. Um, this recipe, I'm using uh, one to two pounds of russet potatoes. Now, I will tell you, whether you're having mashed potatoes with gravy or you're doing a Scottish pie, how you prepare your potatoes is less important as the type of potatoes. All potatoes are not created equal, which is why you have so many different varieties. You cannot use this recipe. You need to use a baking potato not a waxy potato. And a waxy potato would be those like a red skin or Idaho, regular Idaho potato. Those are waxy. Those potatoes are great if you're making potato chips. If you're, make, if you're frying them, then those are great. But if you're making mashed potatoes, um, waxy potatoes are also good for potato salad. But if you're making mashed potatoes, you must use a russet potato. It is, it is a very mealy and soft potato. If you, and it's great if you're doing baked potatoes as well. You don't want to use a waxy potato for this because when you go to mix them or whip them or beat them, or however you're preparing your potatoes, what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up with a very gummy potato now. In, in place of the cheese, I'm sprinkling on some paprika. Now, I use regular paprika and also smoked paprika. The, I use the smoked paprika in the preparation of the base. And as far as the vegetables are concerned, you can choose whatever vegetables you like. I've chosen peas and carrots, but you can use mixed vegetables. And the mixed vegetables um, will give you more vitamins to the finished product. So then you want to pop this into your oven for about maybe 30 minutes. You want to see it bubbling like this, then you know it's done. It should have some color. So now I want to share some stats with you that um, so you can see considered a serving a square amount this size which is roughly two inches by two inches or three inch by three inches okay. and uh, it's not cooperating with me but that's okay it's and this is how you know it's live <laughs> when it doesn't cooperate you can see the meat has maintained it with moisture you've got potato and you've got um your protein the only thing I would serve with this would be a small salad, and you would have a complete and full meal ready to go. So I just need it by itself. Now, traditional Scottish pie, which is made with, in this case, I'm going to use for our purposes ground beef or mince meat. You use the same two, one or two pounds of potatoes, a whole stick of butter, which will be going into your mashed potatoes. Um, an onion, garlic, the same thing we've used, peas and carrots. You would be looking at, for a serving size, this size, 598 calories. You would get 20 grams of carbs, 30 grams of fat, a whopping 2,140 grams of sodium, and 48 grams of cholesterol for a traditional Scottish pie. This pie which we prepared today, same serving, only less than half the calories, You only 194 calories for the serving, just 39 um, carbs, only 2.8 in comparison to 30 grams of fats. Only nine, uh, you get nine grams of protein, so you're not short on protein, 
And the sodium, only 179 grams, as opposed to 2,140 grams. And guess how much cholesterol? None. Zero cholesterol. Enjoying the same. And that's the point of the mushrooms I wanted to tell you um, that they add a meat in this. You're getting the meat, you're getting the warm uh, from the potatoes and the comfort that this meal provides, but you're not getting the, cats, the fats and the calories. In addition, because we're using vegetables, we're getting an additional, instead of, and not just the vitamin A, C, and iron that you would get from traditional sliced pie, we're also getting B12 because we're using soy and that's where we get our B12 from. We're getting some vitamin D because of the mushrooms that we've added, along with umami flavor that you get from the mushroom and the meatiness. You're getting vitamin E, which is provided by our red peppers. Um, also folate, which we get from our peas. And then we have the addition of manganese as well as, um, um, manganese as well as, um, magnesium, which comes from the, um, the potatoes. And you only get that addition of manganese and, and, and uh, magnesium if you bake your potatoes, which is why I say bake them rather than boil them, because you're getting the manganese and magnesium only comes from the ground. And by you keeping the skin on the potato and baking it in the skin, the manganese and the magnesium that's in the skin is transferred into the flesh of the potato. So when you go to mash it, whip it, smash it, however you want to fix it, you're getting those additional trace minerals that are so important to our, um, our health. So I hope you have enjoyed uh, spending some time with me in my kitchen. I look forward to spending more time with you and sharing more nutritional uh, tidbits and tips to help you live a healthier happier life. Manja. <laughs> Voila. That looks delicious. Um, I'm actually going to stop sharing the screen so that we can chat. Great. Um, I was seeing some questions popping up and I wanted to kind of answer them because I, I know some people probably aren't able to stay. There was some... Okay. Uh, conversation about mushrooms and yes mushrooms are fungus and some people choose um, as one of the viewers mentioned not to use them and the question was uh, raised what's a good substitute and I'm so glad they raised that 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 uh, question because this recipe is very forgiving and you can substitute if you wish not to use mushrooms um, you can substitute for chickpeas, um, a very good substitute would be eggplant and as well as zucchini. Uh, and you would simply roast those vegetables and, and, and mash them and saute them with the onions and garlic and the other spices. Uh, jackfruit is another substitute and of course tofu. Um, so it's up to you. In addition, while we're talking substitutes in place of the mashed potato, if you just want to eliminate the potato, with all its fiber and other um, vitamins and things that it brings to the table, you can substitute cauliflower in place of the potato, which will give you a boost and also some minerals, and it'll make it a lot lighter, and that 194 calories will go, go down uh, dramatically. Bear in mind, you will also lose some calcium and some protein because you're getting uh, both of that from the potato. So um, there's, it's a very forgiving thing, so... Just have fun. Enjoy the recipe. Yeah, like we mentioned before, the best food is the food that you're willing to eat. So if you don't like mushrooms, substitute that for maybe TVP or yes. um, something else along the way. Exactly. Um, I think before you mentioned something about cooking tomatoes and how the um, lipocene that's in them, can you talk a little bit about the benefits of tomatoes? And Well, um, you get more uh, the lysine uh, from the raw tomato than you would from the processed tomato, but all of all forms of it has it in there. And the like, the like, someone else put up lycopene, which is also uh, another one of those good minerals that are uh, great for your eyesight. They, um, I can't speak to with uh, into depth, 
or um, with uh, with any uh, real um, authority at this point, simply because I don't have my notes on Lycopy. But it's if you're interested, you can do a quick internet search and just put in uh, Lycopy and um, Lutein, and you will see there's all kinds of information out there about those two. Uh, my, uh, those are what you call micronutrients that are very, very uh, essential for good eyesight and good eye health. Right. Um, someone was wondering about where they can get the recipe. I believe Sister per Terry will put her email address in the chat. And if you shoot her an email, she'll be able to give you um, the recipe later. But while she's doing that, I just wanted to read off some of the micronutrients that were found in this dish. So there is vitamin A, vitamin B12, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, calcium, folate, iron, magnesium, and manganese. That tidbit that you shared about the um, trick, if you bake the potatoes, you get manganese and magnesium was ex especially interesting to me because I've never heard of that. So that's definitely something to keep in mind when cooking. Try to bake the problem the with the nowadays, Leah, is that because the soil quality is getting worse and worse, um, you really have to be creative and flexible in how you get the micronutrients that we need. And one thing I did learn is that with the um, with the absence of certain micro nutrients, it's affecting our absorption because a lot of the micronutrients aid in the body's absorption and processing of the macronutrients. And the macronutrients are indeed what we need to keep us alive and healthy. So uh, we need all of them is because it says micro, it doesn't mean that it's not is not important, it's just the opposite. It is very important. Um, and so it's important that we get all, as, all and as many of them as we can. Right, so just to clarify, macro, macronutrients is like the three categories, which is carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Micronutrients are like the vitamins and minerals that are in plant-based plant foods. Excellent, exactly but they're all important to your body's functioning. Um, so I see that you just put your email in through the chat. Um, yeah. Are there any other questions from the viewers that they'd like to ask right now to Sister Terry regarding the demonstration that you just presented? If you would, um, I have a question. Can you talk a little bit about nutrient dense food and how to make all of our meals as nutritionally dense as possible? Yes, the, um, the idea behind nutritionally dense food is simply you want the ratio of um, nutrients to calories um, to be um, so that the you have low calorie, but very high nutrients. Now, I the health healthline.com, their recommendation is to have about um, 45 to 60% of your calories. Uh, the the recipe or the 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 calories. Uh, that you consume, it should be 40 or 60% for your daily um, calories um, should be made up in, let's say of your recipe, 10 to 35% should come from um, your proteins and 20 to 30% of the calories that you consume should come from fat. That's their recommendation, that's their I guess their definition of what they would consider to be nutritionally dense. The easiest way to remember it for me and know that I'm getting nutritionally dense food is that if you look um, at the nutritional information and you're getting all of these vitamins and micronutrients from this food and the calories is low, 
the Nessa uh, nutritionally dense food. So for like this, in this particular recipe, you only have 194 calories per serving. And in that serving, you're getting all of these vitamins, macronutrients, as well as micronutrients. And so that would be considered a nutritionally dense food. Now, if it was on the traditional side, that would not be considered nutritionally dense because you're getting 598 calories for that serving, but you're getting very few micro or macronutrients. You're only getting a little calcium, you're getting some, um, a little fiber from the potatoes, and then you're getting iron um, from the meat. But the amount of fat, sodium, and other things that's coming along with those micro or macronutrients kind of out, outweighs and undermines the nutritional benefits. So that's one way to look at it. If you, when you're looking at food and you're trying to decide what to eat, pay close attention to that nutritional information label on the side and look at the, what you're getting per serving from that particular um, food item. Right, especially, you should always look at the um, nutritional label that provides a lot of great information. Um, and a, a rule of thumb is to have a very colorful plate. If right. your plate is full of color and diversity, I try to make it not only uh, colorful, but also diverse in textures and things because it's more interesting and it's more fun to eat. If everything's mm -hmm. all mushy or everything's all one texture or all one color, it's not, you can be sure you're not getting enough of the nutrients that you need. So each time you sit to eat, whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, your plate should be colorful. There should be lots of color. We have a lot of, and, and diverse in texture as well. That's so true. Um, there's just one thing that I'd like to point out that Sister Allison Miller um, put in the chat. Um, thank you for your comment. Yes. She did say that there are good types of cholesterol, which is true. Yes. Um, so there's low density lipoprotein. Well, cholesterol travels in your body on either high density lipoproteins or um, low density dip lipoproteins. Yes. Um, we wanna increase our high density lipoproteins, which high is density. better yeah. for your body, mm -hmm. but it's, it's all in balance. So you healthy. should have a, a <laughs> healthy level of cholesterol. Um, Miss Sister Carol, do you have a question? Yes, thank you for taking my hand. How are you? I'm great, how are you doing? Good. We just walked in um, from exercising this evening. Sister Terry, may I ask you two questions? Can you confirm your email address? I know you put it in the chat, but I'm not wearing my glasses. Is it T-E-R-R-O-R 62 Robbins at gmail.com? That is correct. Okay. All right. And if you want to that you me either the recipe for shepherd's pie or that uh, easy skin brightener and clarifier uh, recipe, uh, I can send that to you if you email me. Thank you so much, Sister Terry. So that's what you made this evening, shepherd's pie? That is correct. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you something. Um, Oftentimes I go to Whole Foods just to get some ideas of different things that I can cook. And I love the way that they prepare tofu. Mm -hmm. I've seen them do at least three different styles of presentation with tofu. The latest time that I went, they had um, tofu prepared in squares. Mm -hmm. And it tasted like it had a sesame or a peanut taste. It's kind of hard to describe. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a little challenged how to describe it to you. But then they had scallions on top of it and they had a little cilantro just to give it a nice presentation effect. So here's the question. Oftentimes when you are at um, vegan restaurants or Whole Foods or other places, the texture of the tofu is very thick. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering how is it that they get the tofu that texture? Do they 
bake it, then fry it, or do they fry it and then bake it? Could you now, comment on that? Do you know what sure. I'm talking about? I do know. And the how you process the tofu for your recipes, I, before I answer that, I want to say to you, if you have ideas about the recipes you'd like to see, because there'll be other demos upcoming, uh, please put it in the chat so we can get some idea of what types of recipes. Uh, you'd like to see. Now, I have a recipe to make um, chicken um, chick, chicken sandwiches using just tofu. And the way that you process the tofu is what gives you that texture. So it resembles the chicken and it's very okay. firm. Now, um, a lot of times what they'll do to get that firmness in the tofu is they will freeze the tofu. They will freeze it and that makes the, the tofu much firmer. Um, and in that recipe for my chicken um, patties and chicken fillets, you it's a long process. You you freeze it, then you 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 allow it to thaw out, you season it, you hydrate it, you marinate it, and you freeze it some more, you press it, you do a kind of different thing. Tofu is very forgiving and very, very versatile. So this is why it's so common used and um it can it can mimic lots of different things from chicken to fish all kinds of things so it's just a matter how you process so sister carol yes they are most likely if they have been blocked and it's firm they have frozen it i see a hand thank you sister carol for your question is there anything else yeah i just wanted to know um in addition to freezing it because it seems very firm. Um, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if they also bake it. I was trying to ask you, my sister. I you can bake it. it. Okay. But usually when it's baked, it's not tofu, it's called tempeh. And um, it's, it is baked, but to get it firm, that's what you would do. You would, you would uh, freeze it and you would press it. And that would press out and condense it, press out the water and it would condense it. And that's probably most likely how they got it like that. Okay. Thank you. Sure. It looks like there's another hand up. Yeah. No. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. This is Sister Wanda. And I have a question. Um, I put it in the chat, but I don't, I don't know how you address it in the chat. So that's why I decided to raise my hand and I'm not good at working this. So bear with me. Um, I wanted to know, would Sister Terry be presenting other cooking classes on a regular basis so that we could include those in our schedule of everything else that we're doing? Um, the, I don't know how long, but yes, uh, right now there is a um, schedule that will be um, regularly, will be coming again. You'll see many more uh, demos um, and okay. educational sessions. So yes, that's why I want you guys that are on, if you have recipes or ideas about recipes, or perhaps you'd like to see a vegan version of something you enjoy, demonstrated, um, then uh, put that in the chat box so I can get some ideas about what to demonstrate because there's yes. a lot. Yeah. How to make vegan buttermilk biscuits. <laughs> it's really, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. I've tried so many different times and it never comes out the way they do it on um, YouTube. You know, yes. you go and you look at everything they're doing and you know how to make your your um almond you milk to, to buttermilk hmm? whether you're making a vegan biscuit or regular biscuit vegan the biscuit secret, the secret to a good fluffy biscuit is the dough you cannot overwork your dough right. and it needs to be soft if you don't have enough liquid to flour ratio and you overwork your dough they're going to be tough and heavy so mm -hmm. If you want, I don't know if anybody else is interested in that. If they are, just um, hit me, put in the chat, hit me up on my email. Let me know. Yes, I want to see that vegan biscuit. Those yes. biscuits are easy and they're so nice. And I can give you some tips about how to make your biscuits light and fluffy every time. 
Okay, because I do follow, like it says on um, YouTube, and it never comes out the way they say to do it. I fold the dough and everything yeah. just the way they say, and it still doesn't come out right. Well, I suspect when I first started learning how to do biscuits, I had often little hard rocks and they weren't fluffy and nice with the yes. layers like I wanted. And I had to learn. Um, okay. And my mom was, as you know, my mother was a champion biscuit maker. She was yes. a champion. She was a wonderful yes. cook. And so I was by her side from a little kid watching her and she would say, this is how you do it. And this is how you want it to feel. And I try and it'd be a hot mess, but um, I just kept trying, but I will give you uh, the recipe that I, my go-to recipe for biscuits and they are light and fluffy with layers every time. Okay. Every time. Thank you. I have a question to, for Miss Wanda. Um, yes. When you are doing the recipe, what is wrong with the um, biscuits? Is it chalky or? They come, they come out, you know, on YouTube, they come out nice and fluffy and you can see the layers. And yes. when I'm doing it, I layer it just the way they say. And I use um, King Arthur's flour so it doesn't have any aluminum or anything in it. And, and I was thinking, well, maybe that's what it is because I, yeah. don't, I don't put yeast in or baking powder. And I don't, uh, I don't do the aluminum um, flour that's in it. So maybe that's causing a difference. Whereas on yes, YouTube, they can, they're, they're the using the baking powder can make a big difference um, because the baking powder is what it's a leaven is the leavening agent in the mm -hmm. biscuit and helps to make it fluffy. But there's, I there's ways that you can can trick. And in place of the uh, in place of the um, baking powder, use something okay, else. Okay, because I heard we're not supposed to use baking powder, so I have not been using it. Um, it depends on the type of baking powder. There's some baking powders that have um, that have uh, some added things in it that's not good. Okay, uh, so that's it's it's just a matter of what you want to do, but yeah. Um, it's a matter of personal preference. I use baking powder, um, but I, I have there's a particular type that I use. But um, there's there's substitutes that you could use for baking powder, and buttermilk is one of them. Um, there's other things like cream of tartar. Yeah. Um, some now explain use, when you say buttermilk, I'm thinking almond milk with the lemon juice put in it to make it. Well, seem like it smells just like buttermilk yes but it's not that's yeah. what i'm okay. talking about like a vegan okay. buttermilk obviously uh to do a plant to stick with just plant-based cooking you mm -hmm. some people use in place of the buttermilk they'll use vinegar and again we don't we don't, don't have do vinegar, vinegar. Yeah. but mm -hmm. lemon juice and when you add the lemon juice that there's ways that you and even i've done one which uses um uh carbonated club soda or just carbonated water. I don't like that because I believe anything you put in your recipe should add flavor. And club soda doesn't add any flavor. It doesn't have anything in it. It's just carbonated water. And carbon, I try, I don't drink soda as a general rule. I don't drink soda because of carbonation in it. So I wouldn't want to add that, but that's an alternative. But we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll see how many people we get that are interested in the biscuit. Yes. Um, and Should I if, put it in the chat? I'm sorry. Should I? Can't. There's a lot of, okay. A lot of people are interested in the biscuits, I think. So you think probably so? keep that <laughs> in mind. Yeah. So I guess what I'll have to do is demonstrate with the, uh, with the baking powder and without the baking powder, because that's, um, okay. A lot of people seem to be interested in the vegan biscuit, and I'm assuming that's without the baking powder, because we just need to substitute. Buttermilk seems to be the best, um, the best substitute, and it's easy to make because you can make buttermilk with any milk, whether it's plant-based or otherwise. Just need a little lemon juice, so that'll work. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm.
Thank you for your question. And I just want to remind everyone, if you did have any other recipe recommendations, feel free to put them in the chat and maybe we'll have Sister Terry post another cooking demonstration. Sister Are Terry, can I ask you one more quick question, real quick? Um, there is a recipe I am dying to have. I will pay you to help me to figure this one out. New Vegan and Everlasting Life have this garlic kale salad that is off the chain. I really, really love it. That's the first thing I usually get when I go to either place. And the owner of Everlasting Life is a childhood friend. We went to school together and he sold his business to um, New Vegan. So they copy each other on a lot of recipes. In the garlic kale, the kale is raw. Mm -hmm. I know that they use olive oil, nutritional yeast. Mm -hmm. It tastes like um, real garlic, not garlic powder, the actual No, garlic. it's real garlic. There's no, if you, well, I've had people who've made the kale salad with the garlic powder. If you know anything about me, as much as I love spice, I love garlic. So um, garlic is so good for you. And it makes all the difference in the world in the taste of your, your recipes. You definitely need garlic. I'm trying to figure out what it is they put in their garlic kale salad. Could you please help me to figure this out? I figured out okay. a couple of the recipes, nutritional yeast, the olive oil, um, the garlic, and I'm thinking they have to use onion. Usually onions and garlic uh, together, but I cannot figure out the rest of the spices they use. I can, I can taste it and I can tell you what's in it. Um, God has blessed me with a very good palate. So I can, I can taste it and I will know what's in it without anyone telling me what's in there. Um, and that makes it easy for me to mimic different recipes because I can tell you, and you, in the, in the converse of that is you give me a list of ingredients and I'll tell you whether that's gonna taste good. I'm guessing, cause I've had it maybe once and I agree, it's very good. I, as I can recall from my taste buds, you got the basics down. I would suggest they probably, I would add, if I were doing it, some turmeric, I would add um, obviously, you know, some, uh, as you said, garlic, some onion. I would grate the onion and grate, um, press the garlic as opposed to chopping it because you really want to get out the garlic flavor. So grate the onion and mm -hmm. some, I would use a good quality olive oil since you're not cooking it and you want the fruitiness of the olives to come through. So I would use a, a little of that. I would probably even hesitate for a little acidity, a little chopped fresh tomato. Mm -hmm. So not a lot, because you don't want to overpower it. Tomato is one of those things that easily takes over. Um, but you can email me and I will work on it. I have to taste it and then I can tell you exactly what's in there. Um, but I haven't had it in over, it's been at least two years since I've had their garlic um, kale, but I can give you a good garlic kale recipe um, and you can tweak it. I encourage you as you're looking at these recipes to experiment and have fun in your kitchen, tweaking it to your particular taste. Um, and just because I say, put this or put that, you put, what's going to be inviting for you because your feast begins with your eyes and everybody's eyes are different. I would have added some turmeric into it and maybe a uh, soupçon of some uh, Jamaican curry. I like your spicy Jamaican curry because as you know, curry is really just uh, uh, a melange of different spices. Mm -hmm. And it's just like the Indian gram masala. Every mm -hmm. city you go to in India, their ground, or every house you go to in India, the gram masala is going to be different because it's going to reflect the tastes of that household. So that's why I, you hear me say, you'll see me add um, the curry and turmeric to a lot of dishes because I like spice because spice keeps me from having to add a lot of salt. And I 
hypertension runs in the family and I am battling uh, so that I don't have to take any medicines for hypertension. Sister Terry, there are other things I wanna ask you, but I don't wanna monopolize. Um, I wanted to ask you about um, Alfredo sauce. When I make Alfredo sauce over pasta, I use cashews and well, a little bit of almond milk. I, is How that do you the make sauce? your Alfredo sauce? And the next, I had in mind a recipe for the next uh, demo, which it called for vegan Parmesan. And I was going ah, to add that okay. as the extra bonus recipe so that you can make this Parmesan, vegan Parmesan cheese. It is so good. You cannot tell the difference in it and the regular Parmesan cheese. I made it, uh, and my nephew was like, I saw you make it. He said, but it's, he couldn't believe that it wasn't Parmesan cheese. It <laughs> tastes so much like the Parmesan cheese. So if you hit me up with my email, uh, you can ask me as many questions as you want. I don't want to um, uh, prolong sure, the program sure. any longer than, than we have, but just sure. hit the email and I'll Thank be happy you. to answer it. Looks like we have another hand raised. You can ask your question. Hi, this is Doreen. Just Hi. wondering how can I get this Parmesan cheese recipe? Please. <laughs> email and I will send it to you. Just tell me you want the Parmesan cheese recipe. Yeah. And I'll send it. All right, thank you. Everything sounds wonderful. <laughs> the Parmesan cheese, I love it. I use it a lot. Um, the reason why is because um, my family likes pasta. And so I use the Parmesan cheese if I'm making uh, flatbread pizzas, because I like to make my own little flatbread pizzas instead of buying the pizzas. Whether I'm making spaghetti with marinara, whether I'm making lasagna, or eggplant parm, I use that Parmesan cheese. It's, it's, it's very good. And I keep it in a jar in the fridge in the shake of jar. So it's it's it has great staring power. It does last a long time. Is the parmesan made from nuts? That particular recipe, yes. We're using um cashew, raw cashews. Mm -hmm. Okay. A little disclaimer there for anyone who's a little bit allergic to nuts. You might want to okay. avoid that. <laughs> Well, you know, um, I love experimenting and I'll be happy to experiment with one that uses seeds because I love adding seeds to everything. So I have hemp and I have chia and I have sunflower and, and pumpkin and I've got a myriad of, of seeds. And when I make bread, I like to add my seeds. I do a, a whole grain, um, whole wheat uh, multi-grain bread in which I add lots of seeds and um, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, uh, sesame seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds, all the seeds you can think of is in my whole grain, uh, whole grain honey, honey wheat um, bread. So um, I always have them on hand in my freezer. I keep my freezer full of nuts. So I'm going to experiment with some seeds and see if I can't come up with a nice Parmesan that doesn't have seeds. So by the time that recipe airs, I can give you an alternative to the cashews, which can be a little pricey, so. That would be yeah. greatly appreciated. I know that might be a little bit difficult. You might have to do a little tinkering, but I know I, that you know, some it's people- It's not a tweak in the flavor profile, but I have it already in my head what I think I could use as a good substitute in terms of seeds. So I'm gonna try it and I think it'll be fun um, because, the star of that recipe would be the, the nutritional yeast. And that's gonna bring you a cheesy uh, flavor. Um, so yeah, I think I have something in my mind already. Um, so if someone has, and I like to get alternative because I have friends who are gluten-free. And so I like to try different recipes, different ways so that if I have to prepare something for someone who's gluten-free, wonderful. I also, uh, I'm doing, a cake for a birthday party for a friend of mine. Um, and we've, we've, I do all kinds of cakes and the, their requests 
this year is for Black Forest using Kerob. And it's yummy. I've made it for him in the past, and so he loves it because. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, if we get requests for desserts or things, then we'll add those to our repertoire as well. Hi, Shamia. Nice to see you. Shamia. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, does anyone else on the line have any questions for Sister Terry? I see a hand, but I don't know. Is there a hand? Um, if not, again, if you would like to have any suggestions for um, any future recipes, you can put them in the chat box. I um, listed Sister Terry's email again. So if you want to get the shepherd's pie recipe or any of the other recipes that she mentioned, like for the Parmesan, um, feel free to email her and she will respond to you um, as needed. Um, I think, did someone else have something to say? I have a quick question. question. Oh, okay. do, do you have a cookbook? No, I've been, people, so a couple of folks have hit me over the head a couple of times asking me, including my children to put together sure? a cookbook, but no. And I did see a question just before your sister Holland about recipes without nutritional yeast. And absolutely, yes. I know that some people have issues with um, nutritional yeast and I try to limit uh, the amount of, of nutritional yeast that I cook with. In most cases, I don't use nutritional yeast, um, but there's some things like the, um, the Parmesan cheese one does come, does have the nutritional yeast in it. But if I can find a substitute for it, I do. Um, I used to use nutritional yeast in my mac and cheese recipe, but I've developed a, a recipe that does, that is not, have no nuts and it does not have the nutritional yeast in it. So. I have a question. I always like to ask people who are good cooks what their favorite foods are. Like what your favorite genre of food is, what's your favorite dessert, what's your favorite meat dish, your meat, favorite vegetable, if you can't decide on what your favorite food is. Huh. That's a and if you had to go to a restaurant, which restaurant would you go to? Since I know a lot of cooks just cook them their own food. I the one recipe that I cook the most is my 10 vegetable soup. I love that soup. <laughs> I love texture and color. And my 10 vegetable soup has exactly that. I don't, for many, many years, I did not like soup and especially vegetable soup because most vegetable soup commercially prepared, whether it's in a can or otherwise, it usually uses a tomato sauce base. I developed a vegetable soup that does not use tomato sauce as its base. And the vegetables in most tomato vegetable soups are all one texture. They are just mushy and I don't like that. So my vegetable soup not only has color, it has texture and you can eat on that soup. And it, thank you, brother Robinson. Uh, you can eat that soup all week long and you will still have crunch and texture in that soup. And that's what I love about it. Um, I like food like the shepherd pie that's um, a one dish, a one pot wonder, because it's easy. Um, I was a single mom for most of my children's life and working full time, going to school full time and taking care of two small children. I didn't have a whole lot of time for cooking. So I needed my time in the kitchen to count. So I like to do stuff that doesn't require a lot of babysitting. I love just cooking period. Um, I like the creativity that comes from baking cakes um, because you get to decorate them and I can really be an artist uh, when I do that. And I love challenges. So I like the vegan and plant-based lifestyle because it challenges me in the kitchen. It challenges me. Um, for instance, I love, before I stopped eating meat, I used to love BLTs. Oh my goodness. And because of my love for BLTs, it forced me in the kitchen to learn how to make um, vegan bacon, vegan salami, vegan, <laughs> vegan pepperoni and, and, uh, so, and, um, and other deli meats. 
because I like that. And so when you start your adventure and when you um, transition off of the meat, I encourage you to exercise your culinary um, adventure and prepare the food that you really enjoy. Because if you transition to a uh, plant-based diet and you're missing all of those things that you enjoyed um, when you ate meat, the temptation is very strong to go back. And I want to encourage you not to turn around, um, but to keep going for it because plant-based diet is the best thing for us. And it is, um, you will, the benefits of a plant-based diet, you will realize almost immediately. And so it's, it's well worth the time, the effort, and the little creativity that you're going to put into preparing your meals and have fun, just have fun. I mean, I never knew the cauliflower was so versatile until I started using it. And I've used it in place of mashed potatoes with my very heavy meat eating family and um, my siblings. And they didn't know it wasn't, or they knew it wasn't potatoes, but they had no idea what it was. And I love that. So I like to create things that challenge people beyond uh, what they think, because most people, if you say, oh, I'm vegan, they think all oh, you eat is salad. Well, I hate to tell you that. I do not eat just salad. I love salad, but I love creating things that make people take a step back and say, wait a minute, there's no meat in this? Are you sure? So, <laughs> so I encourage you to do the same thing because it's very fulfilling. Um, it adds versatility to your food and your eating. And it's, it's nutritionally sound. It's going to make you so much happy. You're going to feel better. You're going to look better. So also to remind you, if you want the recipe for the skin brightener, uh, if you have young people in your house who are struggling with acne, that's this um, recipe will work with that. Or if you just want, if you have dark circles in your face and you want to just brighten up your skin, this recipe will work for that. You will come to love turmeric as I did. So, one request just, I have is for future um, coaching demos is adding a little dessert in there because anyone knows me <laughs> knows that I love desserts. So oh, yeah. knowing that you love cake, I, I, I love to make cakes. It gives me a chance to exercise my creative side. You know, right. and so I love taking a traditional recipe. Like recently, I just tweaked my. Um, um, uh, I have a friend of mine who always requests this cake. It's a German chocolate cake, but it's made with carob. And she loves this cake. She's taking it to work. I've gotten people from her job ordering it from me because they enjoyed it so much. I, I'm sorry, I say that again. I said, you need a cookbook. That's what I'm gathering from this. I, the, <laughs> Well, pray. all I can say is pray about it. And, and if the opportunity opens itself up, then who knows? And maybe after I retire, I'll have time to do it. You know, <laughs> And that'll right. be fun because I do. I like, I really enjoy cooking. Um, I like challenging myself. And I like the, to um, see the satisfied smiles on the faces of people who enjoy the meals that I prepare. When I'm home alone, I never cook. I only cook when there's family or someone around to cook for because part of enjoying it for me is seeing the enjoyment others get from it. So yeah, it's, it's, it's my, it's my, I guess you could say my hobby. <laughs> so yes, please feel free to text me any questions or any requests for any recipes that you might or any help, you know, in the kitchen that you might need uh, with regard to um, just, you know, I'm having a hard time. My, my, my bread keeps being flat or uh, it's tough or whatever. Just give, you know, send me, shoot me out an email and I will do my very best to answer you, get back to you as soon as I can and um, help you enjoy your, your um, transitioning. That's so Great, thank you. I think um, Elder Miller has his hand up. Did you have a question? Yes, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you, Sister Terry, for the recipe. It looks very good. Um, I was wondering, with the mashed potatoes, uh, what are the pros and cons of leaving the skin in the uh, potatoes when you mash them to add to the recipe? 
it's a matter of taste. And my daughter has a whole litany of information about how much I hate pillings in my mashed potatoes. <laughs> I don't like pillings in my mashed potatoes. And it's, it's, it's stupid because I love roasted potatoes with the skins on it. But I just don't like them in my mashed potatoes. And so it's a matter of, of definitely personal preference. Some people, the well, for one thing, um, if you're baking them in the skins, it's a, really a, no value to add the skins in them. If you boil them and leave the skins on, it's really no value. Because when you boil them, and I never advocate boiling them, because when you boil them, all of the nutrients are going to be in that water that you throw out. So that's one reason why I don't advocate boiling your potatoes if you make your mashed potatoes. Definitely roast them because as I explained in the video, by roasting it, the, um, mag the magnesium and the manganese that's in the skin as a result of the potato being in the ground will be transferred into the potato as you bake. And then you peel it off. You can just discard the skin or if you like the skin, eat it. I personally don't like skins, but I don't have anything against people who do. <laughs> and I, I, I just, it's just my personal preference, but that's the advantage of baking over boiling. But in terms of the skin, it's just a matter of personal preference. That's good to know. Um, any last questions? So this Saturday afternoon, there's going to be a health and fitness expo brought to you by Josiah's Ministries. And it's going to be on Saturday from 2 to 6 p.m. 6 p.m. at Rico Hill Eden Lifestyle, Lifestyle Center. So that's just a quick plug. If you're interested in more health and fitness information, be sure to um, join um, this expo that's happening at um, Rico Hill. So there it is. Um, I want to thank Sister Terry for her presentation. Um, I definitely learned a lot from her presentation and also this little chat. Um, and I'm sure everyone else on the line learned something as well. And I think we all got some information that we needed. Um, so would you do us a favor and close us out in prayer? Sure. If we can bow our hands. Our Father and our God, Lord, we are so thankful that we were able to spend this time together to share some knowledge and information that is beneficial to us. Lord, we ask that as we go into our kitchens, we invite your presence there, that we may be able to prepare healthy and nutritious and delicious meals that will nourish our bodies so that we will be fit um, to do the work that you have for us to do. Now be with us as we part company. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Terry. And good night, everyone. So Sister Terry, you'll be checking your email as well, right? You, you mentioned the text. Definitely. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, oh. Sister Terry. Good, good night. Good night. Good night, Sister Terry. Mm -hmm.